of stuck here. The cops won't bother me. Hey guys, today I'm sitting on my SH-150i and I wanted to talk to you guys about why you should be buying a scooter as opposed to a motorcycle. And this is something that I'll never be able to convince a lot of people because they see scooters, especially in the United States, as being like feminine and kind of wussy. But I love riding scooters and I don't really care what people think about me. The, these scooters are unbelievably good to have as a rider. And you can learn a lot of things that translate into motorcycling. But what I like about scooters is something that maybe a lot of people don't realize. If you're a douchebag, you can be an ultra douchebag by riding a scooter and get away with it. For me, that's a big plus because if I want to hop on the sidewalk and ride for a little bit, people just look at me and go like, oh, that's cute, that's a scooter. But if you're riding a motorcycle on the sidewalk, people are gonna call the police on you. One of the things I've really enjoyed about riding scooters like this is that I can go into like construction sites and ride in power lines and nobody will care. And the, the bikes are so quiet that they almost sound electric when you're riding them. And riding in somebody's neighborhood in the back in the woods, it's kind of fun. You get really good gas mileage on it, so you're not going to be spending a lot of money on gas. And for $2, you can fill up the scooter and ride it for an entire day. On a motorcycle, you're spending like $10 per fill up or more. And the beauty is that on a scooter, you can really concentrate on other things as opposed to just riding a motorcycle at high rates of speed. On my Yamaha Tenray, I cannot have fun unless I'm going over the speed limit all the time. And that's one of the disadvantages. But on this, I can go 25 miles an hour and still have fun. The type of riding that I do on a scooter is different than a motorcycle because I can, it seems like I can ride around neighborhoods and have an adventure. I don't have to go very far from home in order to have an adventure. But on my Tenray, I feel like I need to go 200, 300, 400 miles in order to have an adventure. This thing, I could just ride to the store and find new things. I find myself riding behind, you know, behind big stores and kind of checking out the dumpsters. I don't know why, but I find that that's kind of like an adventure to me. And scooters are just so easy to get in and out automatic transmission, twist and go. And there's so many types of scooters that you can get. So one of my favorite are the Nifty 50s. It's a 50cc bike. You don't even need insurance for those and you don't need an inspection. And it's a one-time registration here in DC. And you could practically just ride that and because the engine is so small, if anything goes wrong with it, it's cheap to fix, especially if you get a Japanese bike. It's just incredibly fun to have. And this one is kind of a very different style bike. This is used as a motorcycle type of wheel size. So that makes riding a lot more motorcycle-like than most 50s with small wheels. The small wheels are great because you can, it, they seem quicker. Even a 50cc seems quicker than this. This is a 150, so it's, much bigger than a small scooter but it looks small so you can get away with a lot of things. Scooters are kind of like the yoga of working out. You would think that somehow a motorcycle would be much more attractive to the opposite sex but in reality scooters are much more attractive to them because they're much more approachable than motorcycles. As a rider if you have a motorcycle I would probably give scooters a try because they're just so easy to ride and so good. I think if you can suspend your ego for a little bit, you know, at first the drawback of riding a scooter is that you're getting something that's like $1,500 and you can get a Ninja 250 for a thousand. So where the bang for the buck is a little bit lower, but there's certain advantages like the ability to be stealthy on a scooter 
that make a whole lot of sense for riders. And I think I'm going to take this thing out for a ride. And if I ride through a suburban area or a city on a scooter, it just kind of blends in. And I'm actually considering selling my Honda Africa Twin in Europe and buying a scooter like this because I can't see, I can actually do touring on this. I don't need too much. The downside of this particular one, of course, is the gas tank is underneath the seat, so you can't use the seat for, for luggage carrying. But this is a really good scooter. I, I really like this one quite a bit. I used to have a uh, Honda Elite, which was the lead, and it was 110 cc's this is 150 the 110 had the smaller diameter wheels but it was um just as fun as this this one feels much more motorcycle like than the other one scooters that you can get with different personalities like i had a yamaha c3 that looks kind of like a a little cooler you can get a honda ruckus those are super popular uh, yamaha rivas yamaha zumas um, there's so many and you can get amazing deals on scooters, especially in the DC metro area because people are not into scooters. But scooters make a perfect vehicle. Even if you're a motorcyclist and you want a more casual type of ride, scooters are it. And there's another segment which is called the maxi scooter. The maxi scooters are much bigger scooters, you know, like 250cc and up. <clears throat> I've seen all the way up to 700 from Kimco. And those things are much more comfortable than any motorcycle I've ridden. They're couch-like, and the seating position is just so much easier than on a motorcycle and straddling a motorcycle. But, you know, they're not for everybody. I like them, but I'm a fan of most motorcycles, except BMWs. And I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next video. I got worms.